Hey, AP, um, hey Bruins, let's talk about proteins. Now, what are proteins? Here is a little animation about proteins, and I'll show a few examples. So here, for example, you have myoglobin, and myoglobin is a transport protein that holds oxygen in the muscles. So as you can see, proteins can seem very complicated. Um, they've got many parts, uh, but we can break it down and simplify it when we study this. Here's another example of a protein, and look at its shape, and its shape matches its function. And this protein <coughs> uh, regulates DNA, or it turns off a gene so it would be expressed. So if you see its shape, it looks like a kitchen tongue, and it's pretty neat. Now if you look at the protein, uh, it's got chains, and these chains are made up of amino acids, and we'll talk about uh, amino acids. Now here's another protein that looks like it's a pore, and it's a porin found in bacteria. And it's basically shaped as a channel, so things can go in and out. And then if you look at its molecular chain, its shape, again, is shaped out that allows uh, it to be a channel. Now, let's look at proteins in great detail. Now, this is a lipid review, uh, which my other uh, screencast was cut short. So, if you want to look at this and fill out your review and see if yours matched. Okay. Continuing with proteins. So proteins are varied in structure, reflecting the diverse roles. So here's an enzyme, alcohol dehydrogenase. And some proteins are hormones, they're uh, chemical signals. And they're structural, uh, like the collagen in your skin. Or another very important hormone is insulin that regulate blood sugar levels. Now proteins contain carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms, and some have sulfur. Now, the basic unit of proteins is called amino acid. So amino acid is the monomer of proteins, the subunit. Now, if you look at the um, amino acid, you have essential carbon, and essential carbon has a hydrogen and a carboxyl group and an amino group, and here up here has a side chain. So each amino acid is different according to its side chain, and usually we represent that by an R. So there are 20 different side chains, so there are 20 different amino acids. Now, how does an amino acid make a protein? Well, if you have, what happens is you have more than one amino acid, they form a bond called peptide bond. And if you remember from the other screencast, we talked about how dehydration or condensation forms bonds. So when you remove a water molecule, hydroxide ion from a carboxyl group, and one from the amino group, we form a bond between that carbon and the nitrogen. Now here you have three amino acids forming a peptide bond, so we call this a polypeptide. Examples of proteins are, and its functions, helps us with structure, movement, transport, defense, homeostasis. And when we say homeostasis, we mean by um, like enzymes regulating all these chemical reactions. There are signal proteins, like hormones, and they are a major part of our structure, like hair, nails, muscles and part of our cells, like hemoglobin, that transports protein. Now here's a monomer of a protein, again, amino acid. And again, here you see the central carbon, the hydrogen, and this here we call car carboxyl group.
And notice the carboxyl group has a carbon with a double bond with the oxygen and a hydroxyl group here. And this is called amina group because it has a nitrogen, two hydrogens there, amina group. And then this is your side chain. So we, this is how where it differs. Now there's 20 different amino acids and the side chains, as you can see, give its characteristics. So some amino acids are nonpolar, meaning it doesn't have any charge. Some are polar, that means they have a charge, a positive or negative charge. Some are electrically charged, like acidic or basic. Now, proteins are referred to different levels of structures. The first is you have a primary structure, and basically this is determined by the sequence of amino acids. Now, proteins are not functional when you have the string of amino acid. They have to fold into a particular shape to be functional. So if you remember, just like in water, the hydrogen is attracted to the oxygen and they form bonds. Now, one way it forms bond and it forms a helix or a helical shape. Another way it forms pleats, and that's what we call beta pleat. And this is part of secondary structure. Now, tertiary structure even further folds, and it folds with help uh, with all these interactions. It forms a disulfide bond, and a disulfide bond is like if anyone has curly hair, um, or if you ever had a perm, it smells like rotten eggs, and that smells like rotten eggs because of sulfur. And you have ionic bonds also forming between the R groups, and also hydrogen bonds that all allow it to give it a 3D shape. And then further you have more, even more complex proteins called quaternary structures, and these are a combination of um, secondary structures and tertiary. Now, proteins can uh, denature, which means it comes out of shape. So what factors causes proteins to denature? Uh, proteins are very sensitive to temperature. If it's too hot, basically, um, it comes apart, like for example, if you cook an egg. Also pH, it's very sensitive to pH, or amount of salt, or salinity. So these are some factors that can cause a protein to come out of shape. Now, proteins, uh, the sequence of a protein that determines its structure, uh, basically the recipe is in the DNA. Now, if there's a mistake that happens in the DNA that leads to a mistake in a particular sequence, this can cause an altered protein. So for example, in hemoglobin, there's one mistake in amino acid 6. So instead of glutamic acid, it has valine. And just one mistake causes the uh, red blood cell to sickle, causing uh, this person to have sickle cell anemia. So this amino acid sequence is encoded, or should I say determined by the nucleotide sequence in DNA and RNA, which we'll talk about uh, later on. All right, so go ahead, summarize about proteins. This is a good place to pause. Now, I will quickly summarize here. So proteins are made of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. The monomer is called amino acid. Uh, polymer is called polypeptide. And it's all these amino acids are linked by peptide bond, and its functions are structure, movement, transport, defense, so forth, and following are the examples.